Uh, how can raising investment be better for founders? How can be better? You know, uh, it depends on on what you what you have found. Uh, I believe there are two kind of companies. The one where you must uh, you must raise. You you have an imperative to grow, and that can only be done with money. And the one where you should never uh, do anything like that. It's mm -hmm. your own business. You want to keep control on it, you don't want to share things, you don't want to mix up, because the moment you raise money you're taking a commitment uh, with investors and, and it, it makes sense, but it's, it's a pact with the David. Uh, you get the money, there are strings attached. Yeah. I mean it's interesting because I don't think any no entrepreneur starts a business to raise money. You know, they start a business to make pizza or cookies or, you know, build banks, whatever. Um, so being in a situation where f fundraising takes up so much time and so much effort um, is just a major distraction from the reason why they actually started the business in the first place. So I think no, no founder can go into that with um, a belief that that's going to be simple. And I completely agree with you. I think the, the VC as they have to, you know, they have to weed out all of the bad ideas because they can't just be giving money out willy-nilly. Um, but I'm not sure it's something that can ever be simplified so much. You know, it's not a simple transaction of give me 15 million pounds and I'll go and build my business, thank you, and it's done. Um, but I think the process can be definitely a lot more friendly than it has been in the past. Well, nothing is simple in life. We think of startups only in the world of digital and all that, but there is, there is an entire world of people building businesses that are more normal. Uh, in those cases, uh, uh, there are challenges and they should be simplified. In, in the privileged world of uh, our all raise millions to squander on some idea, that if, is very privileged if yeah. you look at it uh, in the global uh, uh, context. Uh, uh, yes, sure, it's... Uh, it's difficult, but it should be, because if you think of it, by any standard, you're getting an amount of money, then it doesn't mean that it's necessarily good in the way it is. It's a matter of every single transaction finds its own balance, and it could be more or less okay. difficult. What's the worst advice you've had when raising investment? Um, so, so we haven't raised any money. Like, we're, I'm a, I have a particular sort of viewpoint on VCs, which um, I think they, they, their incentives is not aligned to the business. So, from my perspective, we haven't raised money in that way. I'm quite old-fashioned when it comes to businesses. I think they should, uh, you know, actually be revenue and profit focused in terms of what they're doing and fund themselves, if that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, I've seen lots of people being given bad advice, which is, you know, make sure you raise, you know, significant amounts of money, make sure you're really focusing on what your valuation is for your business. And all of these things, again, feel like distractions to me in terms of actually the way in which business should be set up. Uh, I mean, if you're focused on building the right culture, you're focused on building the right outcomes for your customers at the end of it, then actually I think these things kind of take care of themselves. How about yourself? What's, what's the advice you've been given? No, I, I, I never received any, any specific advice on, on funding, but I've seen a lot of bad advice going around. The, the worst advice ever is raise money where you're not clearly building a business that justify the relationship. It, it can only uh, lead to confusion, conflict uh, and problems. Sometimes it's needed, sometimes it's not. Uh, it's always difficult. Uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, one of the levers you have uh, in building a company. So what's the thing that you've spent money on for your business that you now regret doing? No, there is not much, uh, I would say. Uh, I believe that, that it's, it's the definition of a mistake. Uh, I believe that if you work uh, uh, with a model and uh, you know what is the theory you have and, and you do something, uh, you're measuring it, you're trying to prove or disprove uh, what you think is right. Uh, you don't do mistake, you just do experiments and you pay for knowledge. So I would regret having spent any amount of money from which I couldn't learn anything because it would be random, either a splurge, a luxury or something like that. I'm not really um, 
the kind of person mm. uh, interested in that. I mean, that, that whole thing of, you know, no, no failures, only learnings, I think kind of makes a lot of sense. I think the only thing I'd sort of point to that I, uh, a few things that I wouldn't spend money on going forwards is like just big conferences, quite frankly. I think the, the nature of them has changed so much that there's a lot of money that can be invested in it. And I'm not sure people ever really see the, the benefit of it. So, uh, you know, the really big top tier conferences where there's 20, 30,000 people together, I'm not really sure, sure biz, particularly small businesses really feel that benefit. Um, how does money shape company culture? Well, uh, it shouldn't, uh, or in a way, um, money can shape company culture because it enables things. So it enables the creation of a company culture, and that's a, a positive uh, effect. Then, of, of course, it's an enabling platform. Then uh, you do with it what you what you need to do. Uh, sometimes money shapes the creation of culture in the wrong way, mm -hmm. because in many cases, if money. Money is this strange thing, and in the life of men, it's one of the things that either you don't care about, uh, you care the right amount, uh, uh, you crave, uh, and it's never enough, uh, and in companies, it's almost the same. You can have money and then distort uh, the whole culture of a company just because you have it, uh, and, and, and valuations and all these things. Uh, sometimes you have to stop and say, is, is this really real? And especially, the crazy thing is uh, when this happens, not because of money, in the sense of money you earn, but money you've raised. I definitely agree with that. I think the you know the the dangers of a, a raise essentially is distorting people's view of success. Really, you know, they they can believe the company is successful rather than showing the signs of success. So, to your point, actually, valuations are just what people believe will happen, not what has happened. I mean, if you look at banking, you look at I mean the consulting industry more broadly. It's the misalignment of incentives that has actually caused many of the problems. You know, PPI is a, an incentive problem. You know, it was people being incentivized to do the wrong thing. The, you know, there's been accounts being created in the US for mortgages that didn't exist because the people who were being incentivized were being incentivized incorrectly. So I think um, money definitely can distort a culture. You know, it can break it really quickly as well. I mean, I, I see every point of success really just as a, an unlocking of the next level of the, the computer game. Um, and if you see it as the top of the mountain rather than just the next level, then people can start to get very, you know, where's my slice of the, the, the pizza? So, uh, have you ever felt like giving up? So honestly, no. I mean, I, I've never, uh, I've never been in a situation where, you know, since starting 11FS three and a half years ago, I've never really been in a situation where I felt like it was um, too hard. I mean, everything is difficult. Like, there's always things. You know, you're. It's either uh, client things or operational things, people things within the company, and there's always stages where the work changes. But genuinely, it's never been something that I've, I've ever considered not doing it. Um, I think many people kind of start businesses sometimes too early. You know, I don't think people who, I think if you've got to the point where you feel like it's too hard, you've either had a bad idea or you've started it without the level of experience that you need to, to really sort of navigate those problems effectively. Um, I think the, the sort of age of entrepreneurship and, you know, build a company, you know, build a startup, anybody can be a multimillionaire doing these things. Um, does lead to people starting these things with very little experience. Um, and because of that, actually, I think that's why they get into those problems. Um, from my perspective, it was very much stay in various different places, you know, look at the industry from as many different angles as I could until I felt like I had the experience to navigate these problems in the way that I'd need to. But, um, I mean, it doesn't stop you being surprised by things changing. Um, and I think, I, if I'm honest, the thing that I think most people are most under-equipped to deal with is business is just people. You know, people kind of think that it's like strategy and like leadership and, you know, uh, standing up in front of conferences and like Sermon on the Mount type stuff. But it's not. It's just day-to-day -day management of people at an increasing scale in terms of what you're doing. And I think if you're good with humans, you'll be a good entrepreneur. Um, well, yeah, there is this thing about uh, entrepreneur as a lifestyle that's, uh, uh, that's modeled about the legends, the, the one in a, in a million that made it and that thing, and you cannot be equipped with the actual reality that the vast majority uh, of, of 
uh, enterprises and, and startups uh, or projects just do fail. That's why it's so important to learn uh, from everything and be thankful that somebody gave you the money to play with, learn, mm -hmm. fail uh, and, and get on again. And, and, and the responsibility, I think, uh, can only be balanced by the fact that uh, once you start, uh, you can't really give up. Yeah. It's just not, not, it's not an option. How transparent are you with money in your company? Oh, well, uh, it depends uh, on the level of detail. Nothing, to me, nothing is uh, particularly to be hidden or, or not. There are, there are things that uh, usually are not shared, but not because they are secrets. Mm -hmm. I would say either because, well, are not things to be shared in the sense of confidential, but not, not, not to be kept hidden by employees or within the company rather than uh, in other contexts. It's just that uh, reserved, uh, usually because of somebody else, not, not me or the company itself. And, and for anything else, I think it's, it, it, it can be quite transparent. This is what it is, and then you end up communicating uh, about things uh, uh, in your company, the the business matrix are something you share. Yeah, they are the, the targets, the goal, and, and the characteristics. Uh, you use them to explain to people where you are and, and where we're going and what we need to get there. Yeah, I mean, the financials of the business inevitably through companies house are transparent anyway. But I think, like to your point, it's being in a situation where you give uh, people within the co the company enough view of the performance of the business in terms of how it's going. So whether it's uh, full transparency around the revenue of the business or expenditure or, I mean, salaries, particularly as, uh, I mean, in the US, it's much more transparent around everybody will talk around a, you know, a, a, over a pint in terms of how much each of them are paid. In the UK, it's a lot more uh, sensitive. You know, people are a lot more guarded about those things. Um, but I'd say everything other than salaries, I think, is is up for transparency because, again, you can you can tell everybody everything's going wonderfully, or you can show them with the the revenue that you're making as a business or the profit that you're making around it. What has becoming a founder taught you about your relationship with money? I mean, that's an interesting one. I, I mean, I'm, again, old-fashioned on this one. I think my mum my and dad kind of brought me up to spend every penny like it's my own. So whether I've been in a big corporate environment or whether it's 11FS now, we really make sure that every pound, every penny is going towards something that moves the objective forward in terms of the business. So, so for me, um, I think it's like, I wouldn't say becoming a founder has necessarily done that, but I'd say a, a good job by my mum and dad when I was little to kind of get me to that point. Well, I would say that, that being a founder, again, founder being the, the, the modern cool way to say you're a business owner, mm. um, looking at a business in its entirety uh, tells you how money is actually the, the, the blood, uh, the, the life uh, uh, of the business, how the balance, uh, uh, how that's the thing. Uh, uh, the balance uh, uh, revenue costs and make it possible and make it, make it viable. I believe it's not really about money in the sense that, well, the value of money as a person, it's, uh, uh, it's something uh, you learn for, for yourself. Uh, and even when you say in, in a large corporate, you could be moving around million, not really uh, understanding what they are. Yes, that's true in money terms. Uh, but I believe it's, uh, it's even more true in the sense that uh, when you move money in a big company and you know nothing about why is that possible, why is that even advisable to do, is because you don't understand the business. Yeah. A business is a very delicate uh, balance of things. It's, uh, a, it's a machine that flies, that needs to fly. And like a plane, if you don't get a certain uh, speed, uh, you're not even uh, gonna take off uh, uh, whatever, uh, how, however long uh, you, you can uh, roll on, on the tarmac. And, uh, and I think the interesting thing is learning how those numbers in that Excel yeah. thing, that actually means money, uh, tells you how a business can be built, mm. can be sustained, can prosper. Uh, I think it's a big lesson in understanding the reality when you uh, when you look at a business end to end and money 
is inevitably uh, the measure of success, uh, the measure of what's possible at any given uh, moment in time. So I, I believe it's a big lesson, more about what it means uh, than the fact that it's actual yeah, coins.